This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Cherie Terrio. Anthem by Anne Ran, Chapter 2. Liberty 5 3000. Liberty 5 3000. Liberty 5 3000. We wish to write this name. We wish to speak it, but we dare not speak it above a whisper, for men are forbidden to take notice of women, and women are forbidden to take notice of men. But we think of one among women, those whose name is Liberty 5 3000, and we think of no others. The women who have been assigned to work the soil live in the homes of the peasants beyond the city. Where the city ends, there is a great road winding off to the north, and we street sweepers must keep this road clean for the first milepost. There is a hedge along the road, and beyond the hedge lies the fields. The fields are black and plowed, and they lie like a great fan before us, furrows gathered in some hand beyond the sky, spreading forth from that hand, opening wide apart as they come toward us, like black pleats that sparkle with thin green spangles. Women work in the fields, and their white tunics in the wind are like the wings of seagulls beating over the black soil. And there it was that we saw Liberty Five Three Thousand walking along the furrows. Their body was straight and thin as a blade of iron. Their eyes were dark and hard and glowing, with no fear in them, no kindness and no guilt. Their hair was golden as the sun. Their hair flew in the wind, shining and wild, as if it defied men to restrain it. They threw seeds from their hands as if they were designed to fling a scornful gift, and the earth was a beggar under their feet. We stood still. For the first time we knew fear and then pain, and we stood still that we might not spill this pain more precious than pleasure. Then we heard a voice from the others call their name, Liberty Five Three Thousand, and they turned and walked back. Thus we learned their name, and we stood watching them go, till their white tunic was lost in the blue mist. And the following day, as we came to the northern road, we kept our eyes upon Liberty 5 3000 in the field. And each day thereafter, we knew the illness of waiting for our hour on the northern road. And there we looked at Liberty 5 3000 each day. We knew not whether they looked at us also, but we think they did. Then one day, they came close to the hedge, and suddenly they turned to us. They turned in a whirl, and the movement of their body stopped, as if slashed off, as suddenly as it had started. They stood still as a stone, and they looked straight upon us, straight in our eyes. There was no smile on their face, and no welcome, but their face was taut, and their eyes were dark. Then they turned us swiftly, and they walked away from us. But the following day, when we came to the road, they smiled. They smiled to us and for us, and we smiled in answer. Their head fell back, and their arms fell as if their arms and their thin white neck were stricken suddenly with a great lassitude. They were not looking upon us, but upon the sky. Then they glanced at us over their shoulder, and we felt as if a hand had touched our body, slipping softly from our lips to our feet. Every morning thereafter we greeted each other with our eyes. We dared not speak. It is a transgression to speak to men of other trades, save in groups at the, the social meetings. But once, standing at the hedge, we raised our hand to our forehead and then moved it slowly palm down towards Liberty 53000. Had the others seen it, they would have guessed nothing, for it looked only as if we were shading our eyes for the sun. But Liberty 53000 saw it and understood. They raised their hand to their forehead and moved it as we had. Thus each day we greet Liberty 5 3000, and they answer, and no men can suspect. We do not wonder at this new sin of ours. It is our second transgression of preference, for we do not think of all of the brothers as we must, but only of one, and their name is Liberty 5 3000. We do not think of why we think of them. We do not know why. 
When we think of them, we feel of a sudden that the earth is good and that it is not a burden to live. We do not think of them as Liberty 5 3000 any longer. We have given them a name in our thoughts. We call them the Golden One. But it is a sin to give men other names which distinguish them from other men. Yet we call them the Golden One, for they are not like the others. The Golden One are not like the others. And we take no heed of the law which says that men may not think of women, save the time of mating. This is the time each spring when all the men older than twenty and all the women older than eighteen are sent for one night to the city palace of mating, and each of the men have one of the women assigned to them by the council of eugenics. Children are born each winter, but women never see their children, and children never know their parents. Twice have we been sent to the palace of mating, but it is an ugly and shameful matter of which we do not like to think. We had broken so many laws, and today we have broken one more. Today we spoke to the Golden One. The other women were far off in the field. When we stopped at the hedge by the side of the road, the Golden One were kneeling along the moat which runs through the field, and the drops of water falling from their hands as they raised the water to their lips were like sparks of fire in the sun. Then the Golden One saw us, and they did not move, kneeling there, looking at us, and circles of light played upon their white tunic from the sun on the water of the moat, and one sparkling drop fell from a finger of their hand held as frozen in the air. Then the golden one rose and walked to the hedge, as if they had heard a command in our eyes. The two other street sweepers of our brigade were a hundred paces away down the road, and we thought that International 48818 would not betray us, and Union 5 three nine nine two would not understand so we looked straight upon the golden one and we saw the shadows of their lashes on their white cheeks and the sparks of sun on their lips and we said you are beautiful liberty five three thousand their face did not move and they did not avert their eyes only their eyes grew wider and there was a triumph in their eyes and it was not triumph over us but over things we could not guess then they asked, What is your name? Equality 72521, we answered. You are not one of our brothers, Equality 72521, for we do not wish you to be. We cannot say what they meant, for there are no words for their meaning, but we knew it without words, and we knew it then. No, we answered, nor are you one of our sisters. If you could see among scores of women, will you look upon us? We shall look upon you, Liberty Five Three Thousand, if we see you among all the women of the earth. Then they asked, Are street sweepers sent to different parts of the city, or do they always work in the same places? They always work in the same places, we answered, and no one will take this road away from us. Your eyes, they said, are not like the eyes of any among men. And suddenly, without cause for the thought which came to us, we felt cold, cold to our stomach. How old are you? we asked. They understood our thought, for they lowered their eyes for the first time. Seventeen, they whispered. And we sighed, as if a burden had been taken from us, for we had been thinking without reason of the palace of mating and we thought that we would not let the Golden One be sent to the palace. How to prevent it? How to bar the will of the councils? We knew not, but we knew suddenly that we would. Only we do not know why such thought came to us, for these ugly matters bear no relation to us and the Golden One. What relation can they bear? Still, without reason, as we stood there by the hedge, we felt our lips drawn tight with hatred, a sudden hatred for all our brother men, and the golden one saw it and smiled slow, slowly. And there was in their smile the first sadness we had seen in them. We think that in the wisdom of women the golden one had understood more than we can understand. 
Then three of the sisters in the field appeared, coming toward the road, so the golden one walked away from us. They took the bag of seeds, and they threw the seeds into the furrows of earth as they walked away. But the seeds flew wildly, for the hand of the golden one was trembling. Yet as we walked back to the home of the street sweepers, we felt that we wanted to sing without reason. So we were reprimanded tonight in the dining hall, for without knowing it, we had begun to sing aloud some tune we had never heard. But it is not proper to sing without reason, save at the social meetings. We are singing because we are happy, we answered, the one of the home council who reprimanded us. Indeed, you are happy, they answered. How else can men be when they live for their brothers? And now, sitting here in our tunnel, we wonder about these words. It is forbidden not to be happy, for, as it has been explained to us, men are free and the earth belongs to them, and all things on earth belong to all men, and the will of all men together is good for all, and so all men must be happy. Yet, as we stand at night in the great hall, removing our garments for sleep, we look upon our brothers and we wonder. The heads of our brothers are bowed, the eyes of our brothers are dull, and never do they look one another in the eyes. The shoulders of our brothers are hunched, and the muscles are drawn, as if their bodies were shrinking and wished to shrink out of sight. And a word steals into our mind as we look upon our brothers, and that word is fear. There is a fear hanging in the air of the sleeping halls and in the air of the streets, Fear walks through our city, fear without name, without shape. All men feel it and none dare to speak. We feel it also, and we are in the home of the street sweepers. But here, in our tunnel, we feel it no longer. The air is pure under the ground. There is no odor of men. And these three hours give us strength for our hours above the ground. Our body is betraying us, for the council of the home looks with suspicion upon us. It is not good to feel too much joy, nor to be glad that our body lives. For we matter not, and it must not matter to us whether we live or die, which is to be as our brothers will it. But we, equality, 72521, are glad to be living. If this is a vice, then we wish no virtue. Yet our brothers are not like us. All is not well with our brothers. There are fraternity 25503, a quiet boy with wise, kind eyes, who cries suddenly, without reason, and in the midst of the day or night, and their body shakes with sobs so they cannot explain. There are solidarity 96347, who are bright youth, without fear in the day, but they scream in their sleep. And they scream, help us, help us, help us, into the night in a voice which chills our bones. But the doctors cannot cure solidarity 96347. And as we all undress at night in the dim light of candles, our brothers are silent, for they dare not speak the thoughts of their minds. For all must agree with all, and they cannot know if their thoughts are the thoughts of all, so they fear to speak. And they are glad when the candles are blown for the night. And we, Equality 72521, look through the window upon the sky. And there is peace in the sky and cleanliness and dignity. And beyond the city there lies the plain. And beyond the plain, black, upon the black sky, there lies the uncharted forest. We do not wish to look upon the uncharted forest. We do not wish to think of it. But ever do our eyes return to that black patch upon the sky. Men never enter the uncharted forest, for there is no power to explore it and no path to lead among its ancient trees which stands as guards of fearful secrets. It is whispered that once or twice in a hundred years, one among the men of the city escape alone and run into the uncharted forest without call or reason. These men do not return. They perish from hunger and from the claws of the wild beasts that roam the forest. But our council say this is only a legend. We have heard that there are many uncharted forests over the lands among the cities. 
and it is whispered that they have grown over the ruins of many cities of the unmentionable times. The trees have swallowed the ruins, and the bones under the ruins, and all the things which perished. And as we look upon the uncharted forest far in the night, we think of the secrets of the unmentionable times, and we wonder how it came to pass that these secrets were lost to the world. We have heard the legends of the great fighting in which many men fought on one side and only a few on the other. These few were the evil ones, and they were conquered. Then great fires raged over the land, and in these fires the evil ones were burned. And the fire, which is called the dawn of the great rebirth, was the script fire, where all the scripts of the evil ones were burned, and with them all the words of the evil ones. Great mountains of flame stood in the squares of the city for three months. Then came the great rebirth. The words of the evil ones, the words of the unmentionable times. What are the words which we have lost? May the council have mercy upon us. We had no wish to write such a question, and we knew not what we were doing till we had written it. We shall not ask this question, and we shall not think it. We shall not call death upon our head. And yet, and yet, there is some word, one single word, which is not in the language of men, but which has been. And this is the unspeakable word, which no men may speak nor hear. But sometimes, and it is rare, sometimes, somewhere, one among men find that word. They find it upon scraps of old manuscripts or cut into the fragments of ancient stones. But when they speak it, they are put to death. There is no crime punished by death in this world, save this one, crime of speaking the unspeakable word. We have seen one of such men burned alive in the square of the city, and it was a sight which has stayed with us through the years, and it haunts us and follows us and it gives us no rest. We were a child then, ten years old, and we stood in the great square with all the children and all the men of the city sent to behold the burning. They brought the transgressor out into the square and led him into the pyre. They had torn out the tongue of the transgressor so that they could speak no longer. The transgressor were young and tall. They had hair of gold and eyes of blue as morning. They walked to the pyre, and their step did not falter. And of all the faces in that square, of all the faces which shrieked and screamed and spat curses upon them, theirs was the calmest and happiest face. As the chains were wound over their body at the stake, and a flame set to the pyre, the transgressor looked upon the city. There was a thin thread of blood running from the corner of their mouth, but their lips were smiling. And a monstrous thought came to us then, which has never left us. We had heard of saints. There are the saints of labor, the saints of the councils, the saints of the great rebirth, but we had never seen a saint, nor what the likeness of a saint should be. And we thought then, standing in the square, that the likeness of a saint was the face we saw before us in the flames, the face of the transgressor of the unspeakable word. As the flames rose, a thing happened which no eyes saw but ours, else we would not be living today. Perhaps it had only seemed to us, but it seemed to us that the eyes of the transgressor had chosen us from the crowd and were looking straight upon us. There was no pain in their eyes and no knowledge of the agony of their body. There was only joy in them and pride, a pride holier than it is fit for human pride to be. And it seemed as if these eyes were trying to tell us something through the flames to send into our eyes some word without sound. And it seemed as if these eyes were begging us to gather that word and not let it go from us and from the earth. But the flames rose and we could not guess the word. What, even if we had to burn for it like the saint of the pyre, what is the unspeakable word? 
End of chapter 2